What's up guys, it's Chris here. So passive income is a large part of my investment portfolio. The problem is that there are so many options of where to put your money and in order to go through all of the choices to find the best one, it takes time. Often it can take many, many hours to go through all the details to know for sure that where you are putting your money is the best possible place for it to grow your capital and to pay you passive income on a regular basis. But the nice thing about this channel is that even though I usually do that research anyway, I can now share the results of that research with you guys to help on your investing journey. So that's why in today's episode, we're going to be breaking down every single income focused ETF and unit trust that's available on Easy Equities in South Africa to see which is the best, which is the worst. And when you break it down to the pure statistics, what is the absolute top performing fund that you can put your money into. So let's get started. Okay, so here we explore the worlds of finance, investing, and personal wealth, and we follow the news of the markets and my own investment journey towards financial freedom. And a big part of that journey is investing towards passive income and dividend stocks. So lately we covered some capital growth investments and we've done quite a few videos on dividends and passive income. But recently I got a message on our Patreon with a brilliant video request. The request was to do some calculations on a few of the most popular dividend ETFs in South Africa. So I said, that's a great idea, let's do it. But I also thought, let's take it a step further. Because usually when I invest, I'll compare all of the competitors to see which one is the best and only then invest my money. And although I have about 45,000 Rand in a couple of these we're going to go through now, maybe things have changed or maybe there are others I haven't looked at and maybe my money is not in the best place and I actually have to move all of it to a better investment. So after this message, I hunkered down and I spent hours and hours researching all of the income focused ETFs and unit trusts on easy equities using key metrics and statistics to see what will actually give you the best return. So in this video, I'm going to share those results with you and at the end of the video, show you with a spreadsheet that you can use to estimate your returns using all of the 17 different investments that we go through today. But what exactly are we looking for? Well, firstly, we are not looking at individual stocks because there are so many factors that affect individual companies and we've done a few of those videos on the channel. What we're looking at are the ETFs and unit trusts because they are well diversified across different industries and cash investments and less risk over the long term, which means we can compare all of these investments with the same metrics, basically apples with apples. Next, we will only be looking at income focused funds. Now, yes, there are many ETFs and unit trusts that will pay you income, like the Statrix 40 or the Fini 15, which mostly have lower percentages like 1% to 3%. But we want to look at the funds, which were designed specifically to generate you the best income possible. Now, property ETFs are also a great source of income, but because that is a whole industry in itself, it requires different criteria and property market analysis separate to this. So we'll do that comparison in another video, but if you want to see that, then just subscribe to the channel. Okay, so for RAND ETFs and unit trusts in easy equities, there are a total of 17 different options that fall within the income generating focus category. Let's list them all right here. Now you can see that there are funds here from everyone. There are Satrix and CoreShares and Coronation and Discovery, Momentum, Ned Group, 91, Prescient and Sunlum. And each one of these are specifically created to provide an investment that pays you out income on a frequent and consistent basis. And ideally each one is trying to get you the best returns out of all of them. So maybe you already have some or more of these in your portfolio, but we're going to put them to the test against all of the others and see which one comes out on top. So as we get to the results, what exactly are we comparing? Well, the obvious one will be the percentage of dividends that it pays you a year. We'll also look at how often it pays you. Is it once a year, twice, quarterly or monthly? That's the distribution frequency. But we also have to know how much it will cost us. So we're going to be looking at the total expense ratio, which is how much the company like Satrix or Coronation is going to charge you yearly for managing your funds. And then the last thing we have to consider is our capital. So the money that we put in, say 1,000 Rand or 10,000 Rand, what is going to happen to it? And is it going to grow, stay the same or disappear? That is the risk of the fund. And lastly, we'll look at the previous six months and 12 months gross of these funds to see how the share price has performed. 
So that is what we'll be comparing. But remember to keep in mind that if a fund is paying 5% today, it might not pay the same next year. And if the fund grew 10% last year, there is no telling what the next six or 12 months will be. So this data is what we can get from the funds currently. But if you're looking to invest in any of them, make sure to do your own research and look through the detail before you make your final decision. Now, everything we're going to go through now, you can find yourself by Googling the fund and looking through their MDD or minimum disclosure document. So after a few hours of data gathering, here are the official results. Okay, I know, that's a lot of data. So let's go through it. First, you'll see the name of the fund as well as the short ticker code. Then the type of investment, either ETF or unit trust. Interestingly, there are three ETFs and 14 unit trusts. That's because unit trusts are allowed to invest in other investment types like money market linked cash accounts or government bonds or even other ETFs and unit trusts. So for dividends it gives you more options for income generation to pay to investors. Then we have the risk. Now I didn't come up with these entries. Every fund in their minimum disclosure document is required to put a risk rating. So we have copied over exactly as the fund manager has ranked the risk of their funds, all the way from low or one out of five up to aggressive for the ETF because it's mostly equities and we will see that in the one year growth, but we'll get to that. Then the distribution frequency or basically how often it pays you income, which goes from twice a year all the way up to monthly, but many as you can see are quarterly and we have the months they pay you if the fund provided it. Then the magic numbers which tell us so much about the story, you have your dividend percentage or how much it pays you per year, followed by the expense ratio or how much it's going to cost you, and lastly how the fund's price has performed over the last year and six months, which also tells us a lot. So let's get to the elephant in the room. Which fund is the best and which is the worst? Now, honestly, this is where I always get surprised in this job because so much of the time it is just never simple. But it all depends on what you're looking for. When it comes to dividend income, the absolute worst performer is the CoreShares Global DivTrax ETF with a dividend percentage of just 1.78%. Now you can double that return with most normal savings accounts. But when it comes to capital growth, it is also the best performer with 15.3% profit over the last year. Now, when it comes to the worst performer in capital growth, we have the Satrix Divi ETF with a 14.2% loss. But when it comes to dividend income, this ETF is also the best income with 8.81% a year. <laughs> So here we can see that with ETFs, you typically have a higher risk, and so it tends to swing big either way. The global markets have grown well this year, so prices are high and dividends are low, but our local markets haven't performed as well, so prices are low, but because of the low prices, dividends are high. But although one was too hot and one was too cold, it seems one got it just right. Probably the absolute best performer overall in this entire table is also our third ETF, which is the CoreShares DivTrax ETF, because here you can see it has the next best dividend income with 7.49% which is a really great income, paid quarterly, and for capital growth, it still has impressive results with the highest growth in six months at 12%, and not a bad one year with 3% positive, plus a low expense ratio at 0.4%. So according to all the numbers, this ETF has the best performance currently. But keep in mind, this ETF has holdings in Process, Naspers, Goldfields, Exora Resources, Combo Iron, African Rainbow Minerals, and others. So it is high in tech and mining, which are industries that are performing well, but can be volatile too. So let's also take a look at the lower risk unit trusts. Here we have the overall worst performer on the list, which is the Sunlum Diversified Fund of Funds with only a 2.05% income and a crazy high management fee of 1.38%. I personally wouldn't touch this fund. Merchant West's Enhanced Income Fund is similarly bad and is also in a negative for one year growth, so those are the two I would not buy. But I'm happy to see that two of the best performing unit trusts are two that I have been invested in for a couple of years now, and that is the Coronation Strategic Income Fund, paying quarterly at 7% income and 0.8% fee. Our actual share is up 1.7%, so I'm happy there. And the Prescient Income Provider that pays us monthly at 6.5% income and 0.6% fee, and that is up in a small positive as well. 
but the absolute best income generating unit trust. And to be honest with you, my favorite pick in this video is the Sunlum Investment Management Enhanced Yield Fund with 7.12% dividend income, which is similar to DivTrax and also a low fee of 0.49% with minimal price fluctuation. So guys, that is it for today's video. Out of all of our results, I would personally be going for the Core Shares DivTrax ETF for a higher risk option and the Sim Enhanced Yield Fund for a lower risk option. Both of them pay pretty much the same in passive income, but the difference will be the risk on your capital for either higher risk, higher returns, or a lower risk of losing your capital. So if you wanna test out all of these funds with your investments, I put together a spreadsheet that will populate exactly how much you'll make by year and by month based on past dividend payments and how much it will roughly cost you each year. So all you need to do is put in how much you want to invest from one rand or say 7,426 rand and 13 cents and the table will fill in automatically to give you an idea of where you might want to put your money for some passive income. You'll find this on the $1 Patreon tier in the description link and free if you're an existing Casual Cash Club member. You'll also get access to message one-on-one -on -one and ask any questions. So if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, share with a friend and subscribe if you haven't already. But until then, I'll see you guys next time. As always, on Casual Cash. Cheers.